Hello, everyone. Merry Christmas. Welcome to our Christmas Eve worship service from Messiah Lutheran Church in Mechanicsville, Virginia. My name is Pastor Ryan Radke, and I'm very glad that you're with us today. However you found your way to this video, welcome. Thank you for being here. I only have two announcements that I would like to share with you uh, for our Christmas Eve worship service. First is that this following Sunday, the 27th, we will be having a service of lesson and carol lessons and carols. Uh, it will be out in our parking lot. And we will be also including a blessing of teddy bears and toys. So we encourage, especially the kids, but really anybody, to bring your favorite Christmas present, uh, your favorite toy, favorite teddy bear to worship with you. And we'll be sharing a blessing of those teddy bears and toys and uh, uh, having a chance to bless your time of play with them throughout the year to come. So I encourage you to bring that with you. Also, if you watched last week, uh, you'll know that I recorded from home because our family came into close contact with somebody who tested positive for COVID. We have all, all five of us in our household have now tested negative, no symptoms, we're doing fine, uh, but we continue to pray for not just those that we know, but everybody who's still afflicted with this disease or living with its after effects, um, suffering losses of, of grief, um, any, anybody who's still in the midst of this, which really uh, is all of us, but some more acutely than others. Uh, so we are thankful that we're okay and um, that those that we came into contact with in between learning about it and uh, letting them know that they're okay too. And uh, we just continue to get through all of this together. And so even though this is not how anybody expected Christmas to go, even at the start of this, we thought maybe we'd be through this by now. Uh, we're still together by the grace of God through the power of the spirit to worship the birth of our savior, Jesus Christ. So thank you for being here. Uh, we will be singing some carols tonight, too, and uh, we'll start with a call to worship. Hopefully you have access to the website, uh, the tab that this video is under. One tab over, you'll find worship resources, including a bulletin for this, or you might have an attachment of this on our email that goes out if you're on our email list. But we begin with a call to worship. We hear the call of love ringing in our ears. The Savior is born, come and see. We see the light of stars and candles leading the way. Follow the star, come and see. We're waiting for a sign, a something, to meet God face to face. Look in the manger, come and see. We come together tonight to be part of God's story of love. Tell everyone you meet, come and see. Our gathering song is, O Come All Ye Faithful. And we will sing verses one, two, three, and four. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Angels, oh come, let us adore him. Oh come, let us adore him. Oh come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord, the highest, most holy, light of light eternal. Of a virgin, a mortal, he comes. Son of the Father, now in flesh appearing. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Sing choirs of angels, sing in exaltation, sing all ye citizens of heaven above. Glory to God in the highest, oh come let us adore him, oh come let us adore him. 
Him, oh, come let us adore Him, Christ the Lord. Yea, Lord, we greet Thee this happy morning, Jesus, to Thee be glory given. Now in flesh appearing, oh, come let us adore him, oh, come let us adore him, oh, come let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Let us pray. Joy to the world, our Lord Jesus has come. Grant that we might welcome and serve our King and his reign in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our first lesson for this Christmas Eve service comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders. And he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second lesson comes from Titus chapter 2. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age, to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that we might redeem that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds the word of the lord thanks be to god we're going to welcome the christmas gospel by singing the first two verses of angels we have heard on high angels we have heard Sweetly singing o'er the plains and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. Oh, 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 Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why your joyous strains prolong? What the gladsome tidings be which inspire your heavenly song? Our gospel reading comes from Luke chapter 2. Now this service that 
we're sharing this evening, this liturgy, uh, is based, was made to be an interactive one. And uh, in the parking lot, that's what we'll do on, on Thursday. Um, but even if you're at home, even if you're just sitting by yourself, I do encourage you to follow along. Um, this is family friendly, be loud at the loud parts, add some exclamation points in, because we need to celebrate the birth of our Lord, even if this isn't our usual way of doing so. So we're breaking up the gospel reading into smaller pieces. At the end of each one, I will say to us is born a savior, and I hope you respond and invite you to respond, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let's begin. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. To us is born a savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth and Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. To us is born a Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the end. To us is born a Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. To us is born a Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. To us is born a Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. To us is born a Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. To us is born a Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. To us is born a Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. To us is born a Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We'll celebrate this good news of the gospel by singing verse 3 of Angels We Have Heard on High. Come to Bethlehem and see Him whose birth the angels sing Come adore on bended knee Christ the Lord, the newborn King. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Is it just me? Or does it feel like we're celebrating Christmas under a cloud this year? And I, I don't just mean the literal ones in the rainy Christmas Eve forecast. For the last nine plus months, we've been living under a cloud, under a shadow. 
Nothing is the way it usually is. We are restricted. We are worried. We are tired. We are frayed and afraid, worn thin. And while we're while we have quarantined and while we've sheltered and while we've kept our distance, it seems as though the distances between us in our country have intensified. Pre-existing fault lines have been exposed and it feels like they've deepened, become more pronounced. God created us to be in community and our community is strained. Strained by the pandemic, strained by the division and conflict, strained by the fact that we can't even be in community, not really, not in the ways that usually feed us and bring us comfort and security and healing. Here we are, Christmas Eve. What are we doing? Well, you're either worshiping outside in a car or in your home over the internet. These aren't bad things in and of themselves, but it's not what our Christmas community usually looks or feels like. We're not in the warm sanctuary, not all of us, with the candles lit, singing all together. There's no choir. And we don't have our usual decorations, our usual traditions. Our togetherness is different under a cloud. Our celebration is different under a shadow. Under quarantine, under masks, under the weather, under clouds of fear and shadows of tension. After more than nine months of this, we are long overdue for the light to break through the clouds and the shadows to fade. The prophet Isaiah was speaking to a people under clouds of fear and shadows of tension. They weren't in a global pandemic, but they were under constant oppression and the fear and the threat of attack from a conquering country. And to this people, to this worried people, God promised a light, a break in the clouds and the shadows fading. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. They promised a new king, a savior to deliver them. They're promised the yoke of their burdens and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor you have broken. They're promised a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. In later generations, after Jesus had been born and lived and died and was raised, God's people could see that this prophecy of Isaiah's was also for them, fulfilled in a new way in the birth of Jesus. And as they told the story of Jesus' birth, the story of Joseph and the census and new oppression in the form of Rome and traveling to Bethlehem, as they told the story of how the time came for Mary to deliver her child, they remembered the promise of seeing a great light and that this child would deliver them. They shared the witness of the shepherds who saw the angel and the glory of the Lord shining around them. They echoed the angel's proclamation, do not be afraid for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. The Savior was born. That meant an end to the shadows, the oppressive clouds, didn't it? No more problems for God's people, for humanity, for, for all of creation, right? I think you know the answer to that. Truth be told, we still live under a shadow, and it's not this drawn out but still temporary shadow of COVID-19 either. There's, there's another shadow that we're under either way. It's the shadow of the cross. The reason the newborn Messiah was laid in a wooden manger 
was so that he could ultimately arrive at the wooden beams of the cross. The divine put on human flesh. The word became incarnate for the sole purpose of saving us. And that salvation was accomplished through the splinters of a cross and a handful of nails. Jesus came to save us. And the salvation came through a cross in an empty tomb. Death and resurrection to save us. To save us from sin. Your sin, my sin, old sins, new sins, the sins of every generation. The manger sits squarely in the shadow of the cross. And our lives are lived from underneath that same shadow as well. Because sin still clings to us like shadows cling to corners, like low-hanging clouds. But shadows only exist when light is shining. The glory that shone around the shepherds in the field shines eternally, even if we can't always see it, even if we sometimes only see it from the perspective of the shadow of sin under which we still live. If you're in the shadow, you know the light is shining. Jesus came down, came all the way down to fully inhabit our humanity, all the way down under clouds and under shadows to be with us, to be us, to save us exactly where we were, exactly where we are. Our celebrations, our normal traditions are, are overshadowed this year. But all humans live with shadows and clouds. The people of Israel in Isaiah's time lived under shadows and clouds. Even Mary and Joseph had shadows and clouds. The cultural scandal of Mary being pregnant while only engaged. The bureaucracy and bullying of Rome as they were forced to travel all the way to Bethlehem. Mary on the verge of giving birth. And then being far from home with no room in the inn and only a manger for a crib. And more shadows still to come from Herod, from chief priests, from shouting mobs, from Pilate, from the cross. None of us are immune to shadows and clouds. But the shadow of the cross, cast by the glory of God, gives way to an empty tomb, new life, and eternal light, and shining salvation. Paul wrote this to Titus. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, while we wait for the blessed hope and manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. We may be living under any number of shadows and clouds with varying degrees of darkness at any given time, but the light of God shines through the shadow of the cross so that we each have the light of Christ within us, no matter the clouds and shadows. And we wait now for Christ to come again, our light and our life, and we wait. While we wait, God has a role for us. This year, maybe more than any other year I can remember, I think our role is to be the shepherds. The shepherds, out in the dark, living in the fields, saw the glory of God, heard the good news of the Savior born, and rushed in haste to see it for themselves. And after they saw, after they shared, and after they heard, they returned to their lives. Even bottom rung of the social ladder, lives, sharing the story of the light, and the promise fulfilled and the Messiah in the manger to all who they met. Here we are this year and nothing is as it usually is. Each of us isolated and tending to our own flocks and concerns. And the light is breaking in for us too. The Savior is born for us 
too, to save us from our sin too. The light shines for us. The angels herald for us. And we come to see wherever we are and we go to tell however we can. Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. Our celebration is different this year. But different isn't necessarily a bad thing, not always, especially if it helps us hear this story in a new way. If it helps us see the light in a new way, if it helps us acknowledge the shadow of the cross in a new way. Our community is strained, but the light is no less bright for the shadows and clouds. I think it's shining ever brighter. May we all, like the shepherds, return from this time of worship, glorifying and praising God for all we hear and see, zealous for good deeds and spreading a little light of our own. Thanks be to God. Merry Christmas. Amen. Our hymn of the day is Away in a Major. No crib for his bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the bright sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. The cattle are lowing, the baby awakes, but little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. I love you, Lord Jesus, look down from the sky, and stay by my cradle till morning is nigh. Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask you to stay close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in your tender care and bid us for heaven to live with you there. Please join me in a time of responsive prayer. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Blessed are you, Prince of Peace. You rule the earth with truth and justice. Send your gift of peace to all peoples of the world. Blessed are you, Wonderful Counselor. You enlighten all hearts with your steadfast love. Wake up your church so that it might bear good tidings of great joy to all people. Blessed are you, Emmanuel. You promise to be with us even to the end of the age. Open our eyes to see your presence in all who are hungry, lonely, or homeless. Blessed are you, son of Mary. You share our humanity. Have mercy on the sick, the dying, and all who suffer this day. Blessed are you, Son of God. You dwell among us as the Word made flesh. Show yourself to us in word and sacrament that we may bear your light to all the world. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please find some way to share God's peace with those you know and with the world around you this day and beyond. Thank you again for your generosity throughout this year, for special gifts and regular giving, for support of this church and other ministries uh, through both monetary donations and in-kind donations like the things that are dropped off for IMSEF and for the gift cards for the Foster Family Christmas tree. Uh, thank you for all your generosity. 
please join me in this offering prayer. We love to open presents at Christmas time. We love to give presents too. Thank you, God, for all that you give us. Thank you for giving us everything. Thank you for the gift of Jesus. Thank you for the gift of the meal we share when we can at your table. Teach us how to give like you give. Fill us up with good things so we can share them. Make us into your gifts to the world through the gift of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, if you are watching this at home, I invite you to find a light, a candle, could be battery operated. There's a lot of those out there now. Could be a, a flame candle, a small light of some kind. Dim the other lights in the room so all that's left is the, the screen on which you're watching this and the small light that you hold. Pause this for a moment if you need to go grab something. Uh, one tradition in most churches I've ever been a part of is that on Christmas Eve, we sing a candlelight hymn. Uh, we sing Silent Night, Holy Night together. Before we sing, we're going to get ourselves ready. So dim the lights, have your small light ready. We're going to do a quieting prayer. Now, this might feel silly to you, but I do hope you play along with me, especially you kids that are watching. We're going to start really loud and get much quieter. Ready? An angel appeared, dazzling bright. I have good news. The Savior is born. Even more angels filled the sky. Glory to God in heaven and peace on earth. The shepherds went to Bethlehem to see this baby in a manger. Help us, God, to see your love in even the most unlikely places. The shepherds arrived and were filled with wonder. Thank you, God, for that first silent night. Have your lights ready as we sing. Silent night. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child. Holy infant, so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace, silent night, holy night. Shepherds wake at the sight, glory stream from heaven from heavenly hosts sing alleluia, Christ the Savior is born. Christ the Savior is born. Silent night, holy night, Son of God, love's pure light, radiant beams from your holy face. With the dawn of redeeming grace, Jesus, Lord, at your birth, Jesus, 
Please receive this Christmas blessing. May the Lord God, who has called you out of darkness to be servants of light, grant you the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, and the peace of the Christ child. In the name of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now we know the shepherds did not stay quiet. They went out and told everybody. So now that we've quieted down, we have to get loud once more. Please join me in our loudening prayer, which goes the opposite direction of the quieting prayer. The shepherds with awe told Mary and Joseph everything. Mary pondered these words in her heart. The shepherds didn't stay in the manger. Their sheep were waiting, but so was the world. As they departed, they spread the word. They told their friends and neighbors about the Savior in the manger. They glorified God. They spread the good news. Send us out from here, full of love and wonder, bursting at the seams to share the news. Please extinguish your lights, but be the lights. Our sending song is Go Tell It on the Mountain. Tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching, or silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy Tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that healed our Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in a lonely manger, the humble Christ was born. And God sent us salvation, that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is born. Go in peace, Christ has come. Thanks be to God. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Merry Christmas. Until next time.